Clinical sign. Onset is rapid, and signs appear throughout the flock within 2 to 12 days, average 5, after aerosol exposure. Spread is slower if the fecal-oral route is the primary means of transmission, particularly for caged birds. Young birds are the most susceptible. Observed signs depend on whether the infecting virus has a predilection for respiratory, digestive, or nervous systems. Respiratory signs of gasping, coughing, sneezing, and rails predominate in infections with low NDV. Nervous signs of tremors, paralyzed wings and legs, twisted necks, circling, clonic spasms, and complete paralysis may accompany, but usually follow, the respiratory signs in neurotropic velogenic disease. Nervous signs with diarrhea are typical in pigeons, and nervous signs are frequently seen in cormorants and exotic bird species. Digestive signs with depression, watery greenish diarrhea, and swelling of the tissues of the head and neck are typical of the most virulent form of the disease, viscerotropic velogenic Newcastle disease, although nervous signs are often seen, especially in vaccinated poultry. Varying degrees of depression and anapotence are seen. Partial or complete cessation of egg production may occur. Eggs may be abnormal in color, shape, or surface and have watery albumin. Mortality is variable but can be as high as 100% with VNDV infections. Well-vaccinated birds may not show any signs of being infected except for a decrease in egg production, but these birds will shed virus in saliva and feces. Poorly vaccinated birds may develop torticollis, ataxia, or body and head tremors 10 to 14 days after infection and may recover with supportive care. Lesions. Remarkable gross lesions are usually seen only with viscerotropic velogenic Newcastle disease. Petechia may be seen on the serous membranes. Hemorrhages of the proventricular mucosa and intestinal serosa are accompanied by multifocal, necrotic hemorrhagic areas on the mucosal surface of the intestine, especially at lymphoid foci such as secal tonsils. Splenic necrosis and hemorrhage and edema around the thymus may also be seen. In contrast, lesions in birds infected with Londibi strains may be limited to congestion and mucoid exudates seen in the respiratory tract with opacity and thickening of the air sacs.